In a moment, we'll have a look at America's newest living volcano. First of our broadcast tonight, we'll be focusing on a powerful and unusual phenomenon, the first live volcano in the continental United States in more than half a century. The volcano, of course, is Mount St. Helens in the Cascade Mountains of southwest Washington State. Ken Kashwahara brings us up to date on what has been going on. It all began 18 days ago. After lying in a dormant slumber for 123 years, Mount St. Helens woke up. Since then, the volcano has grown in size and intensity. The crater, which was initially small, is now nearly a half mile wide, virtually covering the mountaintop. At its peak, St. Helens spewed out steam and volcanic ash several miles into the air, spewed out large rocks and blocks of ice from its crater. The volcanic heat sent streams of melting snow and mud down the mountainside, and for a while, scientists worried about the slides creating waves and an overflow in rivers and reservoirs below so they lowered the water level. Officials worried, too, about the few hundred residents living near the volcano, so they were evacuated. Most took the warning seriously and left with everything they could carry. But some saw it as an opportunity for adventure and decided to climb the erupting mountains for a closer look. During the last several days, St. Helens' volcanic violence has subsided, and geologists are delighted at being able to study what they call the volcano's throat-clearing phase. We want to be able to study what happens this kind of eruption, what happens in the ash falls, which, uh, and uh, these ash falls and gas jets and things like that that are particularly dangerous. We've got this eruption so well wired now uh, that maybe we can come up with some predictions. But even though there haven't been any predictions yet, the monitoring devices now in place around the volcano will give scientists advance warning of any change in St. Helens character. Measurements of volcanic gases, for example, show a high ratio of sulfur dioxide, which means very hot temperatures below, and which could mean lava coming to the surface. But volcanoes are unpredictable, and scientists simply don't know whether a lava eruption is next, or whether St. Helens will go back to sleep, or whether she will continue on like this for a few more weeks, or months, or years. When the volcano last erupted more than a century ago, it erupted sporadically for 57 years. Ken Kashiwahara, ABC News, Mount St. Helens, Washington. Those climbers we saw in Ken Kashiwahara's report took some motion pictures at the top of Mount St. Helens, pictures that were made available to our affiliate, KATU, in Portland, Oregon. The climbers made their way up through the ashes and smoke that Mount St. Helens has been spewing out daily. Finally, they reached the top the rim of the volcano, and were able to peer into the crater itself. There is a layer of volcanic ash at the edge of the crater, and the mountain climbers managed to kick up a good deal of dust. They crossed several crevasses that have recently been created by the series of earthquakes under the mountain. Those are the pictures of what's happened so far. But what can happen next? We talked about that earlier tonight with a volcano expert, Dr. Stephen Harris of California State University at Sacramento. Dr. Harris was standing near Mount St. Helens. Dr. Harris, that's a spectacular, and I must say even romantic looking setting, but I don't see a volcano anywhere. Where well, is you it? Ha you have to take our word for it. It's uh, about uh, 10 or 12 miles behind me, and I'm standing on a ridge about 2,400 feet above sea level, and Mount St. Helens stands 9,677 feet above sea level. Uh, Normally, you would have a spectacular view of a very symmetrical, snow-covered volcano that we call the Fujiyama of America. Dr. Harris, you have something of a proprietary interest in this volcano in that uh, you were the one who predicted uh, some years ago that this would be the next volcano to erupt here in the United States. How in heaven's name did you know? Well, partly from the fact that St. Helens has a record of very recent eruptions. It was observed erupting in historic time and from what we call the stratigraphic record, that is, material laid down during prehistoric eruptions, which geologists have studied. And the volcano has been one of the most frequently and violently active on the West Coast for the last several thousand years. But in, in more recent terms, it, it hasn't been active for what? Well over 100 years. Yeah, 1857, but that's, that's just a wink of the eye in geologic time. What are we talking about now? Is it going to continue its, its bubbling and hissing and, and uh, well, uh, for what, days, weeks, months? It could do what it did during its last eruptive series between about 1831 and 1857, 
it erupted fairly regularly, although they were fairly minor eruptions. Uh, about what we have now, that is steam, volcanic ash, and blocks of rock being thrown out. But just prior to that time, there was a major eruption about 1800 that blew ash as far as Idaho and probably into Canada, several hundred miles to the north. That sort of event could happen again during this particular cycle, although it's too early to tell. You have no way of predicting that yet. I uh, know the, the fact that the earthquakes are continuing as the mountain is being continuously shaken indicates that there is hot magma, that is liquid rock moving underground, which is generating the earthquakes. And as long as these continue, the possibility of a major eruption is there. We have a tendency to regard this, this particular volcano as being relatively benign, as though it's, uh, it's unlikely to really hurt anybody. Is that, uh, is that a safe assumption to make? Uh, no, I, I would say that it's a mistake, as a matter of fact. St. Helens is one of the most violently explosive volcanoes on the Pacific Rim. It's part of the ring of fire that circles the Pacific. And it has exploded ash that has fallen as far away as Alberta, Canada, near Lake Van. And uh, ash balls have also been blown by the winds to the southeast. The mountain is one that throws, scatters ash and pumice for hundreds of miles. Well, Dr. Harris, again, thank you very much for enlightening us on the subject of at least this volcano. And I thank you for standing out there in what must be rather chilly weather by now. It's a little misty and rainy, that's right. Thanks very much, and I'm sorry we didn't get to see your volcano. We'll have more in just a moment. Because every yard has a little bit of jungle in it, every yard needs a home light string trimmer, king of the jungle. The king is gas powered, so you can take it anywhere. It powers through heavy grass and weeds and glides around flowers and shrubs. Just touch the trigger and advance cutting string automatically. This year, home light offers you something more, an optional blower attachment. Snap it on and turn your trimmer into a powerful cleanup tool. For that little bit of jungle in your yard, get the home light string trimmer, king of the jungle. You, you need the breath deodorant. Me? I need a what deodorant? The breath deodorant. Chlorette. Breath deodorant? Sounds strong. That's right. Chlorette, which Actizol, is strong to deodorize mouth odors. It helps your mouth's own freshening power eliminate bad breath. Of course, it costs a little more. But for really fresh breath, it's worth it. Chlorette, the breath deodorant. Say, did you just get that rabbit at your New England Volkswagen dealer? <laughs> That's right. Huh, not much selection, was there? Hey, it's like Tony's Pizza. There's all kinds to choose from. Did you get your choice of options? It's like Tony's Pizza. You can get almost any combination you like. <laughs> yeah, but I bet you had to wait months for all that. Look, Volkswagen's just like Tony's Pizza. Immediate delivery. Test drive the 1980 Gas Rabbit at your New England Volkswagen dealer. My name may be Louis Jourdan, but my favorite sparkling water doesn't come from France. My choice is your very own Canada Dry Club Soda. America's number one sparkling water. I have tried sparkling waters all over the world, but I prefer the clean, crisp taste of Canada Dry. It is, how shall I put it, like your country. It sparkles. America, I toast your sparkle. America sparkles with Canada Dry. A live volcano is an exciting event, not just for scientists, but for the curious as well. And despite warnings of potential danger, Mount St. Helens has become a prime tourist attraction. Stephen Gear reports. Mount St. Helens is becoming a television star. And like many a TV star, she's seldom seen in public. Her best performances, of course, are seen on television and by the foolhardy bunch of news camera people who fly over and around the crater on those rare occasions when the rain stops and the clouds scatter. This is the way Mount St. Helens looks to the average earthbound volcano watcher much of the time. It is not true that it rains more in the Pacific Northwest than anywhere else in the world. It just seems that way. These young people from Seattle spent Easter weekend camped out not far from the mountain and got to see a lot of each other, but nothing of the volcano. It's kind of depressing to stay out in the snow and rain, sleep in a wet sleeping bag. <laughs> you had a wonderful time. Huh? Great. When the weather lifts, Mount St. Helens can be seen from a distance, and every wisp of smoke issuing from the crater provides a moment of excitement. 
Among those in attendance at a viewpoint south of the mountain were early Lance of Alder Grove and his owner. Uh, yeah, my opera glasses are not as good as binoculars, but there is a little puff of smoke up there now. And um, some people say it's going dormant again. Most of the people I talk to, which are not experts or geologists, they think it's going to really do some puffing yet. There are experts and geologists up there, however, surrounded by reporters some of whom ask questions that would embarrass Jules Bergman. Well, what, what are the kind of movements in the ground that you're noticing here? Well, this is a gravity meter, so we can't really determine much about the actual type of movements. It's not necessary to go up on the mountain to enjoy the volcano. One Portland manufacturer has sold $30,000 worth of Mount St. Helens t-shirts. And were it not for the eruption, Mrs. Heck's fourth grade chorus at the Byron School in Tigard would not be singing an updated version of a song called Volcano. ABC News, Portland, Oregon. I know where we're going to go. We're going to go to a commercial. In China, there was once a golden age of bronze. This week, it's revealed in Newsweek magazine. In politics, an exclusive Newsweek poll reveals that Americans want Jimmy Carter to get tougher. In lifestyle, Newsweek reports Italian food lovers swinging from pizza to pasta. In sport, Newsweek tells what makes marathon man Bill Rogers run. In its cover story, Newsweek examines the president's new tack on Iran. Nobody gives you the fast track. Nobody gives you the tasty treat. Nobody gives you the strong trends. Nobody gives you the weak like Newsweek.